welcome back to my channel. This week we're going to be playing around with 3D print, silicone rubber, resin, epoxy resin, and spray paint. And I know that sounds very intense and you might be a little bit confused. So we're going to make a design on Fusion 360. We're going to print it out using my 3D printer. We're gonna make a mold from that 3D print and we're gonna pour epoxy resin to create a final product. So we printed out our combs. We have three different sizes here. I have like a medium sized one and then a tiny comb. I'd say the big one took around six hours. And I already glued this one to the bottom of the container. Uh, I think I might have to leave this one out or use a different container. Only because it's already a little bit squished in here. Sometimes if the layer is too thin in between, it'll just rip. And I want to avoid that at all costs because our silicone rubber here is not cheap. And I don't have a bunch of it. So I don't want to use too, too much material and then mess up. I think this should be enough. I'm going to attempt it and I'm honestly hoping for the best. <laughs> okay, now it's time. We're gonna mix part A and B together and then pour it in our container. Kind of touch on this a little bit last week this model was made on fusion 360 as you can see here there is super glue or sorry hot glue on there because i had to create this silicone mold and this is by no means perfect it's actually a very bad mold design after the fact i realized i should have made the 3d model a lot thicker so that when I submerged it in the silicone rubber, I could just pull it out and that there would be a very flat surface so that the model had a, just a flat finish, not a bumpy finish like how it turned out, as you can see here. After taking the combs and putting them in the silicone rubber, it took about 24 hours, I would say, for the silicone rubber to harden. I just put it in a plastic container and I was able to remove it quite easily. So this was my first attempt and it is 
it is super rubbery <laughs> and like this is definitely not a functional comb because obviously the bristles are just not working i definitely did not put the right ratio because this is nowhere near solid now I know if I need to create something flexible or flimsy or I definitely put a mental note for this just in case like I need to make like a phone case or something. I think this is the best material. So I know now the ratio that I would need to make this. However, for now, this is garbage. Uh, this one turned out really well other than the fact that some of the bristles are a little bit, if you can see, kind of parted. It didn't cure properly and that was my fault because when I took it out of the mold, I didn't place it somewhere that um, it was able to dry properly or cure properly. I would probably create some sort of like drying rack or curing rack so that it could stay stabilized but still get the sufficient amount of oxygen to cure. But overall, this was a good experiment. I am going to take this comb and I might even try a 3D printed one and I'm going to hydro dip that. And what hydro dipping is, it's taking spray paint into a kind of bucket of water and spraying a design in it and then dipping it in. And it creates this very, very nice design that is very difficult to do in other forms. I have two colors here and metallic silver as well as just a matte black and I'm gonna mix them together. I wanted to buy gold, wasn't in stock, so this is the next best thing. However, if this turns out, I'm definitely going to be getting more colors because I think this is a super cool project for, for any 3D prints or any future projects that I do. Okay guys, so now we took it to the balcony. I have my bucket of water here as well as gloves and my bottles. So, sorry if you hear about the noises. It's pretty busy. I live kind of in the middle of the city, so there's a lot of cars and sirens constantly. So don't mind that. I have my mask on too, just for an extra safety precaution. Actual printed 3D printed one, see how it turns out. 